fellow diamond painting addicts and welcome back to Diamond Painting Anonymous. I'm Daphne and I'm here today with kind of a different video. What I wanted to talk about today was my essential DP tools. I have been diamond painting for uh, over a year now. Let's see. Ooh, almost two years now. Oh my goodness. I picked this up as I think a lot of us did during the pandemic. And after two years now, gosh, that's scary to think of that I've been doing this for two years already. Um, what are my essential tools? And so I picked out my top seven things I gotta have if I'm gonna work on a diamond painting. So I'm gonna walk you through all of them I'm, and then I'm gonna show you a couple bonus uh, must-haves. So stick around till the end of the video. But when you start diamond painting, what you get is a kit like this. Now, can you diamond paint with this? You absolutely can. Do you have to buy anything more than this? You absolutely do not. That is why that's what's provided in the toolkit. You can use this pen, this wax, this boat for your, your drills and absolutely diamond paint. Uh, do you have to have all of the fancy stuff that I'm gonna show you? No, you do not. However, if it is a hobby that you're going to stick with, what kind of things should you invest your money in? Now, having said this, I'm going to show you what I have invested my money in uh, because I have the benefit of I've invested my money in a lot of things that I ended up not using. And so after two years, I can tell you these are my go-to items. Yeah, I'm just gonna jump in. Okay, so the very first thing, of course, that you need is a pin. So that little pink pen will of course work. However, it is not the most comfortable, especially for me. I prefer to have chunkier pins, as you can see from my examples here. Now, these are much chunkier than the tiny pink pen that you get. And uh, they're much easier for me to hold. I suffer from carpal tunnel, and so I need to switch up my pins quite a bit. The chunkier ones are easier for me, and then I can go from one that's really chunky like this one to one that's a tiny bit smaller. And I have, almost all my pins have different profiles on them so that I can switch it up and that helps keep my carpal tunnel at bay so that I can do the diamond painting that I want to do. So, a good pen. Now, you can spend as much or as little as you want. They make scrunchies, little spongy things that you can put on the pink pins. That will help with your hand fatigue. If that's enough for you, great, go for it. Uh, if you want more expensive ones, kind of more resin type ones, you can get those on Amazon, uh, pretty much anywhere. Uh, craft stores, that kind of thing. Uh, Diamond Dots, last I checked on Joann's, now has kind of their own line of supplies. So they sell like toolkits, so you can get those kinds of things. Um, Pins on Amazon, you can spend anywhere from, you know, five bucks on, on to 15 uh, is about what they run from what I've seen. These are from a specialized shop on Etsy. Um, I'm not going to murder the name because I don't know how to pronounce it. It is in French. I will put it down here at the bottom and I will put a link in the description box below to their store. I love their pins. You get to pick your profile, you pick your blank. So you have some sort of idea what the pin is going to look like before you get it but they are pricey. Last, I think these for me were like 35, 38-ish dollars a piece. And that's just the pin. That does not include um, these particular tips. And I'll get to that in just a second. So yes, they are kind of pricey, but I love them. I have, I think, three or four from that place. And then I have other ones that I've collected from various different uh, places on Amazon and other stores and things like that. But I really like these. I like kind of knowing what my pen is gonna look like. I think the blanks that he uses are really amazing and things turn out really cool. So you need a good pen. The other thing you need is number two, which is good tips. Now, my tips did not come in this box. I just put them in here because I had this box left over, but steel or metal tips. You can get metal tips from pretty much anywhere. Amazon has them, budget diamond companies, diamond painting companies sell them. You can get them pretty much anywhere. For me, it's all about a matter of preference. I get these on Amazon. These are the ones from Cat Eared, and I will put a link below. 
Uh, I like their single placers the best out of all the ones that I have tried. So that's what I stick with. And that is what is on pretty much all of my pens is a cat eared single placer. Now I have gotten metal and stainless steel tips from various different places. I have some everlasting tips. She was kind of the first Etsy shop that had the steel tips um, or the steel barrels. When they first came out, they were just the barrels. They weren't the all-in-one tips. So that's changed. They now have straighteners. Um, you can get metal tips from pretty much anywhere. So it's just a matter of choice. I like the ones, as you guys know, that have the thinner walls uh, for my multi-placers. And I like these cat ear tips because they have a good enough well for the wax that I want to use. Which brings me to number three. And that is, what do you put in your pens? So can you use the pink wax that comes with the kit? You absolutely can. It works great. Um, I actually did a wax test a long time ago and I'll put a card to it up there in the corner uh, to see which ones last the longest. And because I tried all different kinds of things, I discovered what I liked and what I didn't. So what I discovered that I liked was for my uh, single placing tips, I like glue dots. Now, these are just glue dots you can buy anywhere, any craft store, Walmart, Target, pretty much any place will have these. Uh, these are the micro dots. I also have the next size up, which I think is the mini. And it just comes on a roll like this and you've got, I don't know if you can see them on camera there, you get these little, these little glue dots. And I take of the micro size, two or three of them, depending on um, how I need to get it in the tip. And that is what I use in my single tip. The glue dots for me last way longer and are way less fuss for me than putting the pink wax in my pen. I like my pen to be pretty loaded and so I was constantly squeezing wax out onto drills, which is annoying to clean up. I felt like I was having to reload it too, too many times and I felt like that was taking time out of my diamond painting I didn't want to. And so I have gone to the glue dots. I can do at least one, if not several, depending on the size of the painting with just one set of glue dots. And what I like about the glue dots as well is once it kind of gets not as sticky as I need it to be anymore, I can pull it out, kind of flip it around and use the unused side. So I get way, I feel like I get way more use out of them than the uh, pink wax. Nothing wrong with the pink wax. If you like it and it works for you, great. I just happen to like the glue dots better. Plus, when you're using a glue dot, especially when it's a fresh glue dot, that popping sound as the drills are released is just, it's very ASMR, it's very relaxing, I love it. So, in my single tips, that's what I use. I don't use, however, the glue dots in my multi-placers. I tried that and I discovered I don't like it. It takes me way too long to load, I feel like it takes me way too many glue dots, and I had other options. My other options were, Blue Tack or Museum Putty. What I have been re using recently is Museum Putty. This is extremely cheap. It's basically the same thing as Blue Tack. So if you have Blue Tack, you can get that pretty much anywhere as well. Same with the glue dots. Uh, you can buy this Museum Putty. I got mine on Amazon. I will stick links down below. Uh, and it basically is just like Blue Tack. You take it out, you pull off a section, and you can see um, this is all, this little corner, I've had this probably a year, this little corner is all I've used, um, and it's still going strong. Now, the one thing that I will say about using the Museum Putty or the Blue Tack is it can be temperature sensitive. So like this summer, when it was kind of hot and, you know, it would get warm in the house, it would be almost too sticky. It would, it would cling to things when I didn't want it to be. Um, so sometimes there was a little bit of, you know, pulling drills out of it or whatever. And I will say since it has gotten colder, it's a little um, less malleable than it was before. So it still works. Um, and in the summer, what I did was if it got too sticky, I literally would stick my pen in the refrigerator for 10 minutes or something to get it kind of firm back up again. Uh, for the winter, what I've started doing so far is I just kind of put my finger on it 
and kind of warm up that top section of it. Just, you know, I just sit here with my finger on it just for, you know, 30 seconds or something. And then it seems to work fine. Not really had any issues other than that, but it is something to be aware of that it can be temperature sensitive. Okay. So on your diamond painting, we've now got our pins with our tips. We've loaded our pins with our glue dots and our wax. What's the next thing we need to do? Well, the next thing typically that I do is I kit up my drills. And what do I use for that? My go-to storage is my Elizabeth Ward tray. Now, do you have to have one of these in order to diamond paint? No, of course you do not. I, however, this was really just by fluke one of the first storage items that I tried. I, my very first kind of premier diamond painting was a painting, a Dominic Davison painting from Diamond Art Club, and it had so many colors I felt like I needed to kind of corral the drill somehow. And I had in my previous kind of inexpensive budget paintings, I had been using those kind of Tic Tac containers, which I did not like. Um, it was fine for kind of corralling the drills and pouring them out, but trying to get them back in because when I was new, I had, didn't know about funnels or any of that stuff. And so I, I ended up spilling more drills than I, and it was just frustrating. So I saw this as I was looking through Amazon and so I got one and it has become my go-to. It is called an Elizabeth Ward tray or a Darice tray or it's got lots of names. You can get these on Amazon, you can get them at Target, you can get them at craft stores. They have different names sometimes. You can get them, I think AliExpress carries like a knockoff version of them. I've not tried those brands, the knockoffs, so I don't know, you know, the quality difference, but I love these. So it comes with this lid and it comes with stickers that you can put on here. Now this is meant for people who do like jewelry making and bead making and, and need a place to corral all those things. But it works just as well for diamond painting. And you can see here, I've got washi tape on all of mine. This is a um, tray that I just used with some stickers that I weren't sure were gonna come off cleanly. And I'm gonna be reusing it for some more stickers like that. So I just left my washi tape on there. Typically they're just clear uh, like this with nothing on them. They open on the top. I love them because they lay in this tray. When I've got my stickers on them, I can see all of my drills. I can see the colors of my drills. I can reconfigure these however I want. If I want to move these around and have you know, one of these extra large containers over here and move these over there, then I can do that. I can put a small one here. I can move this one over there. You can move it around however you want. I also have additional containers of all four sizes of these so that when I'm doing a painting, if I need more big ones because I have lots of multiple colors, then I can do that. Or if I need a bunch of the smaller ones because I have a ton of, you know, colors that don't have very many drills, then I can do that as well. This is the um, variable size tray. You can also get a tray like this that has nothing but these small. So every row is nothing but these small. I think you get 78 of the small uh, containers. So, but I like this version just because I like to be able to configure it. I like having these, these big drill containers are very handy when you're doing paintings that have a lot of one color, which when you're doing big diamond art clubs and things like that, you often run into that. And I like that it has a lid. I rarely use the lid when the tray is in use, um, but if you're someone who switches between whips a lot, having these, uh, more than one of these available is awesome. Now. Again, do you need a tray like this? And I'll put a link in the description below. Do you need a tray like this in order to diamond paint? No, of course you don't. You can use nothing. You can just paint out of the bags of drills that they give you and put like paper clips or something on them to hold them, you know, uh, as you switch between colors. You can put them in little baggies. You can, some of them come in baggies. You can just leave them like that. You can put them in the little Tic Tac containers. You can buy condiment cups and put them in that, you know, go to the dollar store or Target and buy condiment cups and put the different colors in that. You can do it however you want, whatever that makes the most sense for you. But for me, 
this Elizabeth Ward tray is my go-to for storage, especially for Diamond Art Club paintings. Okay, so now I've got my pins ready to go. I've got my drills in my tray. What's the next thing I need to do? I need to prep my canvas. And how do I prep my canvas? For me, I always washi tape the edges. When you get to um, a diamond painting, the glue, whether it's poured glue or double-sided adhesive or whatever, is often outside the edges of the actual image that you're going to be diamond painting. And as you're diamond painting, if you wear long sleeves a lot like I do, um, and they're fuzzy like mine are, as you diamond paint, you lay your arm or your sleeve in that glue and or just from being on your desk, especially if you have animals or anything like that, that glue, that tape will just attract dust, lint, hair, all of that. And it just gets to looking grungy. Now, do you have to do this step? Nope, you absolutely don't. You can just be careful of how you're working. You can lay something else on top of it while you're working on each section. However, I think most of us in the community use washi tape because it's cheap, it's cute, and it's a fun way to dress up your diamond painting. So you can get washi tape from anywhere. You can get washi tape that is super cheap. You can get washi tape that is super expensive. It's up to you and what you want. So I collect them and I think diamond painters collect them because you want, it's always fun to have washi tape that matches whatever kit you're doing. So this one for me is just kind of a geometric pattern, but it was pink and gold. And so I happened to be working on my koala, which was a lot of pinks. So I picked this for the washi tape for the koala. And you just washi tape the outside of your canvases, um, again, to keep that lint and everything. I got this washi tape during an Etsy shop haul. It is just cute little unicorns. Um, and I don't know what I'm gonna use it for yet, but I have it, so I have that cute washi tape. And then these washi tapes I have snagged for our particular projects. This is a flamingo washi tape. I have a flamingo kit gifted to me by Susan that I am going to get to one day, and I'm gonna use this washi tape with it when I get to it. I have this washi tape that I snagged out of a, a grab bag that is pineapples because I have a SpongeBob kit that I'm going to be making for my nephew. And since he lives in a pineapple under the sea, uh, I'm going to use the pineapple washi tape around that one. And then I snagged this one just because I thought it was cute. It's um, little glasses and a mustache and a bow tie and, you know, just, I just thought it was cute. So I'll use it for something. Will I have like a mustache, bow tie, glasses kind of diamond painting? No, probably not, but I thought it was cute. So I'll use it for something. And like I said, washi tape can be whatever you want it to be. There's a huge price range. Again, do you have to have it? Absolutely, you do not, but it's fun and it's not that expensive. You can get it pretty much anywhere, you know, craft stores definitely, Amazon definitely. I think probably even places like Tar Target and Walmart will carry some washi tape. Um, and, you know, different people do it differently. I typically only washi tape the outside of my canvas. Lots of other people will do um, washi tape on top of the cover sheet to divide their uh, painting into sections. I don't do that. And that is because of what I do. And that is what I will show you next. So I am on, let's see, what number am I on? One, two, three, four. This was number five. So this is number six. Okay, so washi tape was number five, and this is number six. So what, what are these? These are silicone release papers, and mine are double-sided. So basically, they're non-stick paper. They're non-stick on both sides, so I don't have to panic if I put the wrong side down on my canvas or whatever. My canvas is not gonna be ruined. Um, and I use this to prepare my diamond paintings. So instead of leaving the cover sheet on there and just using the washi tape to kind of divide my paintings into sections, I take off the cover sheet and I use my release papers and I use them as sections. So typically there'll be a little bit of overlap. Um, so my sections will be about the size of this, which I think is about four by six, something like that four by six, 
I think that's what it is. Anyway, um, and so I put these all over where the glue is, and then as I work, I just peel off one section, I work that section, and then everything else is covered up. Now, the one downside of this, for me anyway, is that when I take that cover sheet off and I put it with the release papers on, these are um, not transparent. So whatever painting is behind it, you can't really see it behind the release papers. You can use parchment paper as a cheaper option if you don't want to opt for the silicone release papers. These are not that expensive though. I will put a link in the description box down below. Um, and I love them. They just make my life so much easier. And I feel like it sections off my canvas for me. So I can do that. Now this one, this is just a passport holder that I diamond painted, but um, I have other pieces of release papers that I've cut down into smaller sections. So sometimes when I'm doing a smaller diamond painting, I don't want to do a big section four by six. So I just cut a bunch of them into two. So now they're two by three sections and I can use those. And then I have a set of, when I did my advent project last year, uh, I have 24 of these all cut into these small sections because my painting was kind of small and so this was the size of section that I wanted to do so that I had 24 sections to get me through my advent project. And I just keep them in here so I know if I have a smaller project or if I wanna randomize it, um, you can just do all kinds of fun things. And also with the release papers, you can get stickers to stick on them. I've seen people do numbered stickers like I had here. If you want to kind of randomize what section you're working on just to make it a little more interesting, uh, you can ask people what section they'd like to see you work on next if you're numbering them that way. You can just buy, you know, theme stickers that go with whatever painting you happen to be working on. So if I was working on, you know, a sloth diamond painting, I could get sloth stickers and I could put those on my release papers just to kind of jazz up the release papers a little bit since they're just kind of this boring white. Uh, quite honestly, sometimes I'm so heavy into working and behind schedule, frankly, that I just use the white ones as they are, but you can do whatever you want. And parchment paper works just as well, not wax paper, parchment paper, there is a difference, wax paper you don't want, parchment paper. That is what I used when I very first started out because I didn't know about release papers and so I had parchment paper and that's what I used, or partridge paper as one of my friends likes to call it. Uh, okay, so that was number six and we're ready for number seven. Number seven is of course you need a tray. Now. Can you use the green tray that comes with the kit? Yes, absolutely you can. You don't have to have anything fancy. And I will confess, I have bought many, many, many trays over my diamond painting journey so far, and I probably will buy more because as technology gets better, things get better. Most of what I have these days are 3D printed trays. This is my current favorite, and I'll stick a link down below. This is another tray that I got during an Etsy shop haul. It does have a plastic lid that I can put over it. I don't typically though. My only complaint about this one so far is that the pour spout is made for lefties, which is great. Love that lefties have an option. Unfortunately, I'm not a lefty. So when I'm pouring, I'm kind of doing this little awkward dance trying to get it in there. So I wish I had one that was on this end, but I really like how the drills line up in this tray currently. And so this is the one I've been using. So yeah, so there is my top seven diamond painting uh, must-haves, essential tools if I'm going to be diamond painting. And that is my pens, my steel tips, my glue dots and putty, washi tape, release papers, the tray for storing the drills, and then my tray for when I'm actually diamond painting to dump my drills out and get them lined up. Now, the two bonus items that I'm going to tell you about are things that I use on a regular basis, but not every single painting. So let me show you. The first one that I'm going to talk about is my Xyron sticker maker. If you guys have watched the channel at all, you know I use this a lot. In fact, I use it way more than I ever thought I would. So I'm really glad I got it. It is not expensive. 
you can get it on Amazon. I'll stick a link down below. I think I think I paid $10 for this maybe. Now, I did get the permanent adhesive one. I have switched to the repositionable refills just for my own peace of mind. I've had people tell me that the, the permanent is not actually permanent. It works just as well. I haven't tried it though, so don't quote me because I haven't tried it that way. But I use this when I don't get stickers with my kit. A lot of the more premium diamond painting companies will like Diamond Art Club and Dreamer Designs and those places will send you stickers that you can use on your containers for your drills that have the number, the symbol, the DMC code, all that stuff. A lot of your budget kits, however, do not. So what I do is I scan those in, I scan in the codes, I print them out in a size that will fit on whatever container system I'm using, and then I run them through this to turn them into stickers. So you just run a regular piece of paper through this and it will turn it into a sticker. Super easy, and it makes my diamond painting life so much easier. So that's bonus items, item number one. And then bonus item number two may seem a little odd, but this is something I use pretty consistently in my diamond painting and is something I never would have thought of in a million years when I started diamond painting. And that is my rolling pin. Now, I like to bake and I, oh gosh, probably, I don't wanna say how many years ago, uh, someone, and I don't even remember who, but someone in my family bought me this marble rolling pin and it had a, a marble, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It was like a, not a tray, but like a plate. It had little feet on it, so it stood up off the um, cabinet a little bit, but it basically it was, marble is really good for rolling out like pastry and stuff because it, it retains the chill. So if you're using chilled dough, that helps. This is all irrelevant to diamond painting, but anyway, that's why I had it. I used to bake a lot. I don't anymore. I don't have the other piece that goes with this the little flat piece that you put on your cabinet. No idea where it went, lost it and moved somewhere. But it's marble, it's heavy. And so when I'm done with a diamond painting, especially if I have a square diamond painting, because I just don't seem to get my squares quite placed sometimes, I go over it, my painting with the rolling pin. And I can hear all the clicks and pops as I roll over the painting of all the drills kind of popping into place. And I will even do it in sections if I'm working on a pretty large painting, just to make sure that I have all the sections previous that I've already completed before I work on a new one, make sure that all of those drills are pressed down and are in place. Now, do you have to have a big marble this size rolling pin? No, you do not. I, this is what I had and I love it and so this is what I use. However, you can get all kinds of different rolling pins. You can of course get them in any home goods store, you can get them on Amazon. Um, all the budget diamond painting companies sell like little plastic or wooden ones that you can get, anything like that. But for me, I just love it because like I said, when I'm done with a big painting, like when I finished Miss Havisham, I went over this not only as I was working on it and I would finish a section, I would then roll over it to make sure all the drills were not only snapped into place, but also adhered really well to the canvas uh, before I moved on to the next one. And then when I finish, I go over the entire painting just to make sure that I didn't miss anything. And quite often I will find that I have. Um, and it could be something as simple as, you know, I've missed something's popped out of place because I shoved drills around as I was trying to fit one in or if I was trying to get one out because I put it in the wrong place, things happen. So I just go over everything with my rolling pin to make sure that it's all down, sealed, adhered as good as I can make it and everything is in place. That was a lot, you guys. Um, when I started to kind of gather things for this video, I thought to myself, okay, what, what it, you really have to stop and think, okay, what is essential? If I'm going to sit down and start a new diamond painting, what things do I absolutely have to have that is going to make my diamond painting experience better? And that's what this is all about. This is not, uh, you know, telling you that you have to have any of these things by any means. You do not you can absolutely diamond paint and be successful with the kit that comes, the tool kit that comes with your diamond painting. However, 
if it's a hobby that you're going to stick with and you're going to be doing lots of diamond paintings, you might want something a little fancier than this pink pen. You might need to pour out, you know, especially if you're working on a big diamond painting, more drills than will fit in this tiny little green boat. You may need more wax than just this one little square. You can get extras of all of those things if that's what you want and more power to you. Uh, I prefer to have these things. <laughs> After, like I said, two years of diamond painting, I have really kind of tried everything, I feel like. Again, there's always new things coming out, but, you know, I tried all different kinds of storage and I happened to luck into this tray and found out I absolutely loved it. Uh, I, I found, you know, those little pink pins didn't work for me, so I had to find an alternative. And then the tips came out, the steel all-in-one tips came out and I wanted to try those. Washi tape was not even a thing on my radar until I started diamond painting. And then I didn't like the pink wax, so I went searching for alternatives and found my glue dots and my putty. Uh, I'm, I'm, this is my current favorite tray, but I will admit I go through stages. Um, I may not like this tray after a couple more diamond paintings. I may find something different slash better. I don't know. I have a ton of trays. I do switch them out frequently. Some I like for certain things, some I like for others. This one, I was working with a square kit and it worked really well for lining up my square drills. Uh, I don't know if it's going to work as well with a round. I haven't tried it with a round yet, so we'll see. Uh, and even if at that, you know, there may be a new one come out and I decide I wanna try it. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna stick with my release papers. Those are kind of go-tos for me, like I said, and my rolling pin and the Xyron. So, you know, again, these are all essential tools to me that make my diamond painting life easier. Your essential tools may be different because again, all you need is this. But if you'd like to make your diamond painting life easier, more comfortable, faster, better, and those are all subjective terms for the most part, then explore, see what else is out there. Maybe you try glue dots and you hate them. That's fine. Not everybody is gonna like it. I know people who are like, yeah, that's too much fuss for me. I'm gonna stick with the pink wax. If that works for you, then awesome. You do what works for you. I just wanted to share with you guys what works for me because I really do like these products and I think they're great. So I wanted to share. So again, my top seven essential DP tools with two bonus items, the rolling pin and the Xyron. Now, again, I'm not gonna put a link to the rolling pin. Everything else I will link in the description box below. Rolling pins I'm gonna assume you guys can find on your own. That's it for me today, guys. I hope you liked this video. If you did, before you leave, don't forget to do all the things. Give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that bell notification icon so that you can be informed of future uploads. And as always, guys, Thanks so much for watching.